How much are camp swaps worth on a small block Chevy? How about a small block Ford? What happens if we install a performance cam with 224 degrees of integration on a small block Ford or on a small block Chevy? How do they compare to doing the same thing on an LS? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Here's a question for today. What about the small block Ford and the small block Chevy? Now the LS gets all the love and we know if we put a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam or one of my low buck trucks or any of a million other cams in an LS, we get big power gains from a cam swap. But what happens when we do the same thing to a small block Ford or a small block Chevy? So let's take some 224 cams, put one in a small block Ford, put one in a small block Chevy and compare that to putting one in an LS. What kind of power gains do we get on the little Ford and the little Chevy? And more importantly, wow. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and find out how installing our 224 cam in the small block Ford, the small block Chevy, and the LS, and see how much each of them gain. Now, obviously, there's no way to make them the camshafts exact, but this gives us a pretty good idea what happens when we stall these combinations in the different motors, and we get different power gains for a variety of different reasons. We're going to talk about all that stuff. We're starting off with our Ford. This was a 302 5 liter. This one I was actually rebuilt, so it was a 30 over 302. This one had a forged flat top piston with valve reliefs in it so that we could run more camshafts in it, but you could fit this camshaft with the right cylinder head, especially with a stock cylinder head, it will fit stock piston to valve clearance with a stock head on it. But we had forge rods and forge pistons. We had a stock crank. We had a stock block. As I said, 30 over. We topped that with a set of factory E7 TE heads. There was nothing done to them other than a spring package to allow for the camshaft. We ran some comp springs on this thing. We ran a GT40 upper and lower intake manifold and a 70 millimeter throttle body. We ran 36 pound injectors. At this test, it had a set of Hooker inch and 5 eighths long tube headers on it. We had a Mazir electric water pump. We were tuning this with the Holly um, HP management system. And so we could dial in the air fuel. This thing ran best at 34 degrees of timing. We put the air fuel, you know, like at 12 eight. And so what we did was we ran the baseline first with the factory HO camshaft. And then we installed the Extreme Energy 274 camshaft, which is our 224 cam. So this is the power curve of this 302 combination with the stock camshaft in it. Remember, stock cam, stock heads, and GT40 intake. So a little bit better intake than stock. But this combination made 278.5 horsepower peak and 323 foot-pounds of torque. You can see it's making peak power out of about 53, 5400 RPM, peak torque came at 3900. Here's what happened when we installed the Comp Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. That camshaft is a 555-565 lift combination with a 1.6 rocker on it, which comes stock and Ford, and this one had a set of uh, bolt-down roller rockers on it. It was a 224-232 degree duration at 50 and 112 degree lobe separation angle. So all we did was take the stock camshaft out, install this 224 camshaft, and here are the gains that we got. Peak power numbers jumped up to 312, 311.6 horsepower out here at 5,400 RPM. And peak torque jumped to 348.5 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. You see there was gains really pretty much through the curve. We didn't load the bigger camshaft for whatever reason uh, down ultra low. We might have had a little bit of crossover, but this camshaft on the five liter Ford stuff, even with a stock head, uh, is really a pretty good camshaft upgrade. But it's important to note that we got, um, we added 33 horsepower to this thing, but, and, and also about 25 foot pounds of torque, we measured peak to peak. The bigger gains we got, um, you know, as much as, what, what did we see here? Much as 40 horsepower or so out at the top. And the reason for that is because this was otherwise restricted. This camshaft can make a lot of power. We've made way more than 400 horsepower with this camshaft, but the gains offered by the cam were being restricted on this five liter, both by the factory restrictive cylinder heads and a fairly restrict, restrictive GT40 intake. Now let's find out how well the Chevy does. Okay guys, now it's time to take a look at what happens when we install our two, A224 cam in a small block Chevy. This particular small block Chevy was actually kind of a hybrid. It was an earlier non-roller short block 
combined with <laughs> the later Vortec heads, which would normally be like on an L31, uh, with which would be a hydraulic roller block. But this was a flat tappet block, so it was a slightly lower compression, but it had the Vortec heads on it. We actually ran this combination carbureted. We ran it with a Speedmaster dual plane, a Holley 650 carburetor, our inch and three quarter dyno headers. We had an MSD distributor on it. And naturally we did jetting and timing to try to optimize the power production on this thing. And this is, this is interesting also because we installed a, this is a change that we made one flat tap at cam to another flat tap at cam. And it's interesting because we started out with probably a milder cam on this small block Chevy than we did on the Ford. And that's an important thing. We're always comparing it to the stock cam, but what stock cam are you comparing it to? The camshaft in the Ford and in the HO motor is actually a pretty healthy stock cam. This truck motor that we compared this one to is not very stock. I mean, not very strong. In fact, this thing is more like 180 degrees at 50. So it's a very mild cam. So what we'll see is when we go from that to a 224 cam, we're going to get a bigger change in power. And that's exactly what happened. So our carbureted small block 350, lower compression with the Vortec heads. We did have valve springs on it so that we could run uh, more camshaft in this thing. So run with the st this stock camshaft. <laughs> We made 278 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 353 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we installed our Comp 268 cam. It was an Extreme Energy 268. That was a 477, 480 lift. Again, this is a flat tap cam. 224, 231 at 50 and 110 degree load separation angle. <coughs> Excuse me, and you can see we got pretty good gains. We went, from, we went from 278 horsepower up to 343. So we got some pretty good gains here. We got about 65 horsepower, so it was pretty good. And we also jumped up in torque from 352.5 to 381 foot-pounds. So we, got, we gained... Um, 28 foot pounds of torque. So pretty good gains. And you can see down low, we really didn't lose very much. And I'm going to show you uh, another little test that we did while we were doing this because I actually ran an intermediate cam between the very, very mild stock truck cam that was in this thing and this 268 cam. We ran a pure energy 246 cam. And you can see the pure energy cam actually did fairly well. Pure Energy Cam was a very, very small duration or very small lift, 429, 438, only 203, 212 at 50 and 110 degree lobe separation angle. But you can see it made a lot more torque than either the stock cam or the 268 cam up to about 3,900 RPM and then made a good bit more than the stock camshaft did beyond that, but not nearly as much as the bigger 268. From 3,900 on out, the 268 was quite a bit better, but with a little pure energy cam, it made 312 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 382 foot-pounds. So now that we've run the small block Ford and the small block Chevy, let's find out when we run a two, let's find out what happens when we run a 224 cam on the LS. Hey guys, before we get to the results on the LS, I want you to check out richerholderperformance.com. If you're looking for performance parts for your LS, we got cams, we got springs, we got lifters, we got kits, Black Friday sale, 10% off. So check it out. Now we've taken a look at the small block Ford and the small block Chevy. Let's find out what happens when we put a 224 cam in our LS. This one was a junkyard 5.3 liter you know, where we go get the best motors possible. And this was a 5.3 that I used to test a number of different cams. In fact, we tested all of the factory cams and that video is up. You can check that out. One of them was this Crane 224 cam. And what we did was run the 5.3 liter in stock trim. This thing had been taken apart and cleaned um, and then put back together. We did add ring gap to it because we were later going to run a bunch of boosts on this thing. But we used it first to test all of these camshafts and we ran it with bigger injectors, we put 36 pound injectors in it. We ran it with a Holly management system to dial in the air, fuel, and timing. This thing had a truck intake manifold, the way that it comes from the factory. It had an AccuFab throttle body on it, but it was the same size as the factory one. We had inch and three quarter long tube headers on this thing. It had the the like with the other, the Ford and the Chevy, the LS had a valve spring upgrade to take advantage of or to allow us to take advantage of the higher lift camshafts because we were running a bunch of these camshafts. 
and we ran this thing first, but otherwise it had the stock 706 heads and it's stock compression. The whole bottom end was, in fact, the whole, the whole thing was stock basically, other than the injector upgrade and the spring upgrade um, and our change in throttle body. The LS, the, it was basically just a 5.3 the way that we normally run them. And, and it did exactly what all these 5.3s do. This thing made 353 horsepower and 383 foot pounds of torque did very well. We started this one down at 2400 RPM because we were testing some of the stock cams and we kind of wanted to see where what they were going to do down low because you know that's kind of where the stock cams are going to shine. Here's what happened when we put our Crane 224 camshaft in this thing. And the Crane cam Crane cam offered 590 lift a 224, 232, so right in line with the other ones. This one had a, a, a wider LSA, 115 degree lobe separation angle, had 17.8 <laughs> inches of vacuum if people are interested, and uh, cranking compression was 176. This thing, you could see, had a big effect on power output. We went from 353 horsepower up to 442 horsepower. So we gained 89 horsepower. Peak torque was also up, but as you can see, all of the power gains came past 4,200 RPM. Peak torque went from 384 foot-pounds up to 412 foot-pounds, and instead of making peak torque at 4,300, it was now making peak torque at 5,000. And we had shifted peak horsepower by 1,000 RPM from 5,200 to 6,200. You can see, unlike the others, we did have a drop in low speed power, and that's probably because we tested this thing down low, and we didn't test the others quite as low. But there was a drop in power below 2,900 on the bigger 224 cam, but this thing offered some serious gains, 89 horsepower in the case of the LS. And it just goes to show you the reason for that is because the LS had the other two things. I mean, it had enough displacement, had a 5.3, didn't have excess amount of compression, but it had really good cylinder heads, better than the Ford, a lot better than the Ford and better than even the the Vortex Chevy heads by quite a bit and had a really good intake manifold. Even just the truck, the, the lowly truck intake manifold is still better than the other intake manifolds that we use on the other combinations. And those things were holding back the power gains that you get from a cam like this. The LS had those things and we had a camshaft in it. that was a 224, 230-ish camshaft and it made a lot more power because it had those other things. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I'll keep testing.